Secrets of Torah. This year is entitled Moshe Rabbeinu, the first Hasidah Rebbe. Sounds like a very strange idea, Moshe Rabbeinu, the first Hasidah Rebbe. I'll tell you what I think it means. Everyone tries to make sense of Yitro's introduction of the judicial system to Moshe Rabbeinu. What did he introduce? What was his novel idea? Something that no one thought of before? To go ahead and have a Supreme Court system where you have the small courts to deal with the small claims and they work their way up to a Supreme Court to Moshe Rabbeinu. So Barbara Nell actually says it was not such a new idea really, it was going to happen anyway, but the Torah gives credit to Yitro who had such nice intentions to help the Jewish people out, but really it was an idea that was on its way anyway. That's how Barbara Nell. I just want to say that true judicial system really was through Moshe, that was the ultimate justice, anything less than that was a compromise, and Yitro was proposing a compromise, but he said the people just are not ready for the ideal justice. I'm wondering about another possibility. That Moshe, of course, knew that in terms of pure efficiency, it would be easier to go ahead and have a whole system of hundreds and thousands of judges, and he'll only take the difficult cases. He knew that. He thought that it would be best for everyone to have exposure to Moshe Rabbeinu, to discuss the case, discuss the halacha, discuss personal issues. And this is the only money I have left, and now this person wants to take it from me because by accident, my mule trampled his tent. So Moshe is involved with the people's lives. He's talking halach with them. He's talking personal issues with them. And Moshe said this is an amazing benefit. Of course, Moshe, in his humility, he was not seeking his own glory, but he knew he was a unique figure in Jewish history. God chose him to give the Torah to the Jewish people. And he says it would be wonderful for them to have exposure to me. And what was Yitro's insight that Moshe did not see before? So it's possible Moshe knew it was hard for the people, but he didn't realize how difficult it was. And he thought that they happily went along. Yes, it means waiting for hours, but to see Moshe Rabbeinu, it's well worth the wait. Yitro had his pulse, uh, the finger on the pulse. Because he was with the people, and he sensed that it was just too much for the people. It was too hard for them, and it was not beneficial. And the, the gain they had by seeing Moshe was outweighed by their frustration. It's one thing where a person waits for hours to see your high Kanievsky. He, on his own, chooses to do that. But over here, they were forced to do that, and that was Yitro's insight. That it simply wasn't worth the people's time. They didn't feel that way. So Moshe said, if that's the case, let me check it out with Hashem. And that's what he did. So it's possible that that was the changeover. That Moshe knew it was hard for the people, but didn't know to the point that they regretted it. And they were frustrated. They thought it was worth the wait. That's how they felt. it. And that's for Yitro came and said, no. And I think the idea of having a connection to a Rebbe, to this is something which we talk about the Hasidim having a connection to the Rebbe. Really, I think, is part of the Jewish idea in general, even before the Hasidim and that connection to the Rebbe came about. And we see that Moshe Rabbeinu did, and Yaron had this as well in the beginning of Bamidbar. When they had the count in the Midbar, every, the Ramban explains that every Jew went up to Moshe and Aaron. It wasn't a long court case like in our Parsha, but they went to see him. They said, Shalom Aleichem, and there was a connection between the people and Moshe Rabbeinu, a personal connection. When the Rebbe Mechabad, 40, 50 years ago, introduced this idea, it's the same concept. But everyone Sunday morning waited for hours to see him. A Shalom Aleichem. Sometimes it was more than a Shalom Aleichem. They had a connection to a giant. People do that today with all the Hasidim. And of course with the Rechaim Kanievsky, they wait for hours to see him, to have a connection, to get a bracha for him, to feel that closeness with him, even if it's just for a moment. That idea of a person having a connection to a Rebbe, a small connection, once every few years even. It's a beautiful concept. There's a whole other question when it reaches a different level where people think, oh, if, if, if uh, some magical powers the Rebbe has, that's a whole other discussion. Where it has to be analyzed in its own right. If, is that how people look at Rebbe's and, and how does that work and what do we think about such a thing? But I'm just focusing now on the human personal connection between a person a member of Klai Israel and a giant.
And I think it's important to recognize this greatness and this importance. And I think that was Moshe Rabbeinu's idea over here. And just in conclusion, Dr. Alan Goldstein, that was a Rov's personal doctor for many years, just passed away this past week, a tribute to Dr. Alan Goldstein, what a loyal Talmud and doctor he was to Rav Soloveitchik. And also you read him and the stories he writes about his connection to Rav Soloveitchik, who of course wasn't a Hasidic Rebbe. But that love and the connection, the lessons that he learned from the Rav, it's exactly what we're saying today. The importance of having that human personal connection with the giant. Shalom.